Hello, Michael here with another ZBrush tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to model a fry pan in the new 4R8. We're going to be using some of the live Boolean mode features that have just been introduced. Uh, but the main reason we're doing this is so we can render it up uh, in the next tutorial uh, using either RenderMan or Redshift, uh, depending on what your flavor is. Uh, so why don't we get started? First thing we're going to do is uh, just going to create a sphere and then we're going to initialize that. Uh, we're going to make it a polymesh 3D first, and then we're going to initialize it as a Y cylinder. Let's go into um, wireframe mode here, and hit BZM and go to Z Modeler, uh, which is becoming less and less popular with the new Boolean mode, but um, I think it still works quite well. So let's. Uh, well, it doesn't actually matter how big it is because it's all relative at this point, but sort of just start getting our main shape for the bowl sorted out uh, and I will show you my uh, reference really quickly so um, yeah I'm just doing these sort of deep dish um, pan sort of things it's going to be an anodized type material on the uh, pan part and then we just got an aluminium part there and then a sort of rubber or plastic handle I'm going to sort of make it a bit more rubber but the main things that I'm going to want to hit are the obviously the shape of the silhouette of the pan um, that little separate metal part there. Uh, we're going to put a couple of screws on the inside as well just with some insert multi meshes and uh, doing this handle here using some of the live boolean mode. Alright so sort of get it roughly to the size you want it. Um, then we're going to make sure we're in Z modeler. Uh, we're going to go to that center point there and we're going to hit split on it. Split that out. This is going to create our central area and then we're going to Q mesh a polygroup island and we'll just sort of make it roughly that big and then with these um, external edges here we want to go to the edge and we're going to select crease and then we'll just get rid of the creasing on it by holding down alt and clicking on the edges so when you hit D uh, to go to smooth subdivisions, you should get something that looks like that. We want to get rid of the um, creases on the internal edge there as well. So you should have something that's looking somewhat like that. I might make this a bit deeper. I don't know anything about cooking, so this is sort of just uh, uh, by the seat of my pants. Um, I want the, if you see there when it's smooth subdivide, that edge, that lip is a bit too thick. So if we just select this outside edge here, uh, we go to scale and we go to edge loop complete. We can just move that out towards the edge. So now it's a bit thinner, which is what I want. We can also do the same with the polygroup island. So we can go scale uh, polygroup island. Scale that to your heart's content. And then moving to the move tool, if I hold down control and click that polygroup island, uh, it will isolate it or mask it and then I can just use the drop pin the new function you know I didn't think I was going to like this because um, I got so used to the transpose tool but um, no I do like it I'd like it quite a lot now <laughs> actually I'm going to make sure that um, mirror mode is on as well and on the x-axis as well I do this because this is going to be symmetrical I don't want it coming through the bottom there but I do want it sort of somewhat within range of the bottom now that uh, edge there is probably looking a bit thin. I might even add another edge loop there. Or just actually um, scale that edge loop out a bit. Yeah, that's better. Alright, so that will probably do for our um, pan part. It's not quite the same as this. Um, if I wanted to make it exactly the same, I could probably scale this edge loop here out. Um, I'll delete. I can show you how that works actually. So I'll go to insert edge loop, um, I'll delete that edge loop there, and then I'll just select this outer edge loop, scale it out. If I wanted to add some more edge loops in the in, in, inside there to get that creasing around the bottom of the pan, I probably could. So if we uh, insert uh, a single edge loop again, we'll just go like that. Yeah, we get something that looks like that. I'm going to bring that internal edge loop up a bit though. That's a bit better. Um, this is not my final subdivision. I'm going to go up a bit higher than this. this is only 42 polys. I can probably go up to like 500 or something if I really wanted to. 
Um, so that's fine. So we'll uh, go to our sub tool now. We'll rename that to be the, I don't know, dish. I guess that would probably be what that's called. I don't really know the anatomy of a pan to be quite honest with you. All right, so we'll insert or append just whatever you like because we're going to initialize it again as well. So we'll select that. Um, and we're going to start with the metal part that's leading up to the handle, sort of the mount. So we'll go to initialize cube. Make sure you've got X symmetry on. Uh, moving that way. All right, scale that in. So the um, reference has got sort of a taper out like that. I'm going to sort of use that. It's rounded on the sides, and I'm going to sort of do that the same as well. So just move that into position, and then we'll just get the depth as well. And on the reference, it's about a centimeter below the, the lip, roughly. And the width is probably at its widest part, which is where it connects somewhere like that. So that's cool. Select these external vertices, or these right-hand side vertices, and we'll just scale them in. Um, I might just delete that edge loop. Because I don't particularly need it, and don't really need that one either. Or that one. And then we can move that back vertices up like that. Um, so we can make, create a nice taper towards the end of end of the handle. Okay, so that's going to be that's probably okay. So subdivide that's not right though. Uh, we're just going to insert some edge loops. Yeah, I might make that a bit fatter that way though. And I want it to clip there. I'm not really too fast on making this super realistic there, but. Um, the way it's actually mounted is with screws that look like they're screwing onto a mount on the inside. So um, if you did want to leave a little bit of a gap, you could. I'm just going to mount my directly in there though. All right, so um, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to apply my dynamic subdivision and delete lower until I get it to sort of where I want it, which I think maybe one more subdivision level. So 898 is going to be the key. Yeah, that mount looks good. And then we're going to um, go to brush, I for insert, and I believe it's under IMM parts. And I think, I don't know if, I can't remember if I got this off um, Zebra Central or not. It probably is. Um, so just look for that one. It's called IMM parts, uh, probably in the big IMM thread. And um, I'm just going to, sort of mount this roughly where I think it looks like it is on the inside so something like that you can stylize it as much as you want I kind of like stylizing things I'm not really big on realism to be honest so I kind of like the idea of having these big nasty bolts um, so that's cool I'm also you notice how they're perfectly symmetrical if I just mask if I just turn off um, symmetry and mask one side and then go to the um, move tool and then use uh, move that little pin tool which move to the center of the unmasked I'm just going to make those not symmetrical because that makes it look a little bit more interesting all right so that's probably cool I'm also going to get this to the correct subdivision so I'll apply that and delete low and then smooth subdivide it again probably want to go somewhere like that depending on what you want it to look like. I just want to make sure that none of this topology really shows up in the render. So when it's smooth subdivided, it should look pretty clean. Um, I could go probably maybe to 2000. I'm not bothered about getting really good uh, topology or uh, it's, I'm not trying to make it very uh, light or anything like that um, because I know this is going to be the only thing in my scene. So you need to make use your own discretion as to what you're going to be doing. I mean, the total polygons in this object is only 3000 at the moment. so. For a game object, that would be no good, but um, for just like a single render or like a shot, a close-up shot, it would be quite fine. Um, all right, so let's do the rest of the handle. So we'll append a, another sphere, which we are also going to turn into an initialized cube. Shift F so I can see the apology, and we're just going to sort of block this out. So the um, looking at a reference, the handle sort of is extruded slightly beyond the the taper end of the mount 
So we're going to make it a little bit wider there. Um, it's got a lower part here and then a skinnier part along there. These two pans are different. I'm just going off this top one here. Then we've got a thumb grip and we've got a hole in the back to hang it. So we'll hit both of those and we're going to use um, live boolean mode to do both of those. So if you haven't used it before or you haven't seen it and get real excited because it's good stuff. Uh, I'm also going to uh, rotate this so it's upwards, but for the moment while I'm working on it, I'm just going to keep it flat so it's a bit easier to deal with. What we're going to have is we're going to BZM again and insert an edge loop there. Um, delete that edge loop and delete that one. Make sure we've got X symmetry on and we're just going to Q mesh a single poly. So it looks something like that. That's definitely going to have to be longer. Judging by the reference, it looks like the handle is roughly the same width of the as the diameter of the dish itself. So uh, from this part here to this part here should be the same width as that. So something like that will be cool. Uh, we also want, if I'm just hitting Alt, select those, uh, create a temporary poly group and Q mesh a poly group all that there. Get something that looks like that. And then if I delete that edge loop there, that's a bit better. All right, so we're getting a little bit closer. We'll add an edge loop at the end here so we can get it to go all the way to the end. Um, I'm gonna go high poly on this particular part because of um, using live Boolean. So uh, I'll be able to smooth it just with the painting brush, uh, with the sculpting brush, so that's cool. Uh, but I will just slide that edge loop complete just a little bit that way. So I can get a bit closer, that's cool. All right, we're getting there. So let's subdivide that a couple of times. And then we'll go into our subtool palette. Um, doesn't look so good on the subtool palette here, but uh, there's a little downwards arrow that I'm just gonna click here. This is gonna mean that everything below it is gonna be in live Boolean um, subtraction. So we'll append a sphere just for something new. Uh, we'll initialize that one as well. And I'm going to make this one a sphere. And we'll go back to the subtool palette and we'll make this a boolean. And then I'll move that into place. Nothing's happening yet because I need to turn on live boolean mode. Um, I'll turn on X symmetry as well. So you can see that's subtracting already um, as a live preview. And man, seriously, Pixelogic, this is just the best. I love this. So we'll get this uh, subdivided a couple of times. So remembering that your live Boolean, its subdivision matters. Um, so make sure you've got out the correct subdivision for what you want for your object. Yep, you know what? I actually have just realized that um, I do want to move this in just a touch. But that's cool because then we can still move our live Boolean like that. And um, in this, I'm going to try and hit this. It's sort of like a, a bit of a, a flat edge along the front there for your thumb. So I'm going to do the same thing. Um, if you want to see the sphere that you're working on, if you hit Shift F so you can see its topology, will make it a little bit easier. Um, so I'm just going to go to the lower subdivision again, and I'm going to delete higher. Then I'm going to um, using Z Modeler. Uh, we're going to go insert an edge loop. So to get an edge loop there, so we get this flat side like that. And then if I rotate this just a touch like that, see I get that flat edge like that. And it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. And you know, I could scale this or whatever. Um, might make it a bit thinner. I think I'm going to want to make that handle slightly longer. It's looking more like a skillet at the moment, but that's cool. All right, um, we'll go back to this. Go to lower subdivision. Select those edge, uh, the vertices there, and we'll just bring that out a, a couple of times, and then we'll just go up to the higher subdivision. That's cool. So we need to make the hole in the end there for the holder. Um, I'm just going to scale those in just for a little bit more taper. Yeah, that's all right. All right, so we'll go to Subtool again. Uh, we will append another sphere. I'm just gonna do a quick save. All right, and we're gonna initialize that 
into another sphere, sphere. No, let's make that a cube. Um, uh, symmetry again on X axis. Move this into roughly the right position. We'll scale it in a bit. All right, so with the reference, it's got a bit of a curve on either side, so we're gonna to wanna to hit that as well. So if I um, smooth subdivide that, it's not far off, but I will delete these edge loops. So it's a little bit closer, and then I can just add these guys back in like that, and we'll get something that looks like that. All right, so we'll make this a Boolean by clicking that those two circle buttons there. And we can preview it like that. That's a little bit, a little bit crisper than what I'd like. So what I'm going to do, is select those top faces and just taper them out like that. And actually, I can show you something cool here. Uh, I'll just solo this for a moment. So if I um, subdivide that a couple of times and go to the move tool and then go to the cog thing, we can do a bend curve. If I go to geometry and delete lower, so we'll go, or maybe bend arc. Okay, so uh, I'm still not quite used to this, um, but what I'm gonna do is, I think this is probably in the right way to do it. I'm just gonna select this top one and sort of bend it like that with a mask on the bottom so it creates sort of a, a bit of a, a bevel on the inside and then I can invert the mask and do the same on the bottom like that and I'll just move it down like that and then unsolo it I might have to move that around a bit actually just looking at whoop, looking at what I've done it's not symmetrical either but whatever all right so that's kind of a bit more interesting looking on the inside it's got a little bit of a taper there all right so yeah I'm pretty happy with that I'm just gonna do some smoothing once I'm in um, Dynamesh, uh, so we want to now make this a boolean mesh, so selecting that one there, I actually I think it's going to make a boolean mesh out of everything, but we just want to get this handle. So we're going to click make boolean mesh, and it's going to create a new tool, which is uh, this guy here. Actually the, um, yeah, the topology is a bit jacked up, so we're going to change that. But basically we're just going to delete the other part, which we don't want. Go back to our main tool, we can append the new handle. Uh, and I'll just hide those other guys for the moment. So we'll dynamesh this um, to whatever resolution you want or need. So I want it to be something like that. And I sh should have had this at a much higher uh, resolution when I made the uh, when I made the boolean mesh, but that's fine. We can fix this just where we're at 200,000 polys. We can definitely fix this with some polish. And we'll just do some smoothing. Um, yeah, so before you make your boolean mesh, make sure you've got it at the right subdivision level. I just sort of forgot because I'm still getting used to this workflow, just to be quite honest with you, but I am enjoying it quite a bit. And we're going to polish some crisp edges just to get these guys looking a bit better. I'm going to smooth out that back part of where the thumb would enter. Cool. So now we can go to, um, we don't want this to be 200,000 polys because that's just ridiculous. So we'll Z remesh this to sort of 5k ish, see what it can do. Where do we get? 10,000. We can probably halve that. Yep. So when we smooth subdivide that, that looks pretty good. Lost a bit of the sharpness there, which isn't ideal, and um, yeah, I don't mind that actually. I'm going to keep that. All right, so we do want to rotate this though. So if I hold down Alt, I can move the pivot point around uh, using these exterior corners, and then just rotate it a bit. Um, so main thing is be happy with what you've designed for the handle. Um, I can probably go on and mess with this a bit more. Like I think I should probably taper this a little bit. But I think overall it's going to look fairly reasonable, um, especially once it's rendered. And it does look pretty close to the overall thing there. All right, so yeah, that's um, that's pretty much it though. We've hit all the main landmarks of it. 
Um, just a really quick tutorial to give you some ideas um, of how to create your own utensil. Obviously you can apply these theories to anything that you're modeling, whether it be kitchen stuff or, I don't know, guns or whatever helmets. Um, I use all these same thing, uh, same ideas. I'm sculpting a helmet at the moment. I'm using the same techniques. Uh, maybe I'll show that in a different tutorial. Uh, but if you like this one, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it. And um, if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of these tutorials every week for things just like this, ZBrush and other CG products. If you'd like to stay up to date further or contact me, make sure you join the Facebook group, link in the description. Make sure you are back next time for when we render this up in Maya with either RenderMan, uh, which is a free non-commercial renderer made by Pixar, so you should have it if you have Maya. Um, and you can get Maya as a free student version as well, so there's no reason not to. Um, or Redshift, uh, which is a commercial uh, render engine which I also use. So yes, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching and happy modeling.